10 in Nigeria. Um, how's the journey been so far? Wow, the journey has been really turbulent, <laughs> but interesting. Yeah. And what, why would you say that? Turbulent because adoption by schools and our policy stakeholders had been mixed. Some people are excited, quite excited about it and understand the concept. And then others are, isn't it what we already do? Why do we need to do this? Why do we need to change or transform how we're going about doing it? So it's been really mixed. So let me ask you this question. Can there be innovation without STEM? No. For us to be able to innovate, we need to have a paradigm shift. All along, what we've been doing is emphasizing theory, theory, theory. We need to have more emphasis on application, relevance to the real world over and over and over. If you look at countries like China and Korea, that's what they do. They make sure their students are immersed in how to apply the knowledge immediately. And it appears that there's this crisis with STEM across the world, particularly in Western Europe and probably the US. Um, don't you think that's something that's happening here? You see, at least those countries, they realize there's a crisis and they are working on it. Us, I, with us, I don't even think that a lot of us realize there's a crisis. So to me, that's the difference. Okay, so to take us through a, a typical STEM class. If a child comes into a STEM class, what will the child be learning? A child will walk into a STEM class and it will be based on a theme. It will be based on a project, solving a problem in the real world. An example will be chemistry. I will talk about cleaning up dirty water or physics, creating solar, so solar cells. We all need light. I mean, we're constantly complaining about the fact that we don't have enough power creating solar cells. So something that actually solves a problem in the real world, but yet you're applying the knowledge of what you're doing. What do you do when you're creating a solar cell? You're generating electricity. That's what we teach in physics. So you're learning. Mm. But, but it appears that for us to really uh, change our, our STEM curriculum in Nigeria, we need government policy. Um, are, we, are we making a headway with that? There have been some, how will I say, intervention and some talk about change and working on things. But the problem we have in Nigeria is not talk. Talk is cheap. We talk a lot. Execution is key. We've not been executing, actually. That's where our problem is. We have had, in fact, I was invited to be a resource person at the talk last year by the Ministry of Education. And we're talking about... Lagos of Federal. It was federal. So you see, there is talk and we're working on... So we were supposed to have a workshop over the long holiday. Long holiday for us is uh, July, August, and part of September. We were supposed to be working with teachers. But as usual, oh, we don't have enough money. Oh, how do we do this? You can start small. You can have a pilot scheme, bring in some teachers, and those teachers train other teachers. And then it, it's constantly like a domino effect, continues to replicate itself. But we just say, oh, we don't have enough money. How do we do this? And it dies off. And, and I'm wondering why a state like Lagos that seems to be at the forefront hasn't embraced some of what you are talking about. Have you approached them? Yes, I have. I have gone to some of our policy <laughs> stakeholders here at Lagos State. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's very interesting. They'll tell you, you know, we're gonna, we'll get back to you. We're not working on that right now. Or you know what, you can drop your proposal over there. We'll get back to you. You know, just ways to stall you. And like you said, I really was excited because I felt that a, a state like Lagos would, would want to be a pioneer state and show every other state that, look, we're doing this. We're hands on this. In fact, when I saw Code Lagos, that even gave us more courage that, yes, see, we're doing something progressive in Lagos State. So we can do this here in Lagos. So I was surprised by all these stalling attempts. Do you believe in the Code Lagos project? I believe that it's a good project. My hope is that it will, it, I mean, already they're executing it. So that gives me hope. My issue is continuity. We start something, we need to make sure that when you start something, you allow it to have its lifespan so that at the end of it, you can come back and now evaluate and say, okay, how, what did we learn from this? What were the mistakes we made? What can we do differently? And when I say lifespan, a lifespan is between five and 10 years. But unfortunately, our lifespans <laughs> here in Nigeria have to do with the political cycles, and that's not good. In fact, even that five, 10 years sometimes is not enough time, particularly in science when you're conducting experiments. You're supposed to give yourself, I think, anywhere from 10 to 15 years. So you can really study it. That's what we call a generation span. So you can really study it and say, okay, this worked, that didn't work. Let's see the children as they are going through the phases. Because you know, each stage for a child, age-wise, mental, is different. The way a primary school child will think and 
understand things is different from the way someone in secondary school. And when you're in university, it's better to study them all through. You want to start code Lagos? Okay, start with them when they're really young, see how they are when they become teenagers, and then when they're going to university, then write reports and sit down and say, okay, what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to change? But no, four years, eight years, <laughs> when we have policy changes, bam, it goes all over again. So. so let me understand you when you talk about STEM. Um, are you focused on people who will turn out to become scientists, doctors, or anybody can actually understand STEM but still go on to be art and social science? What's, what's your plan? What are, you, what are you aiming for? It's twofold. We do want to raise more innovators. We do want to raise more engineers. We do want to raise more scientists. But we need them. They're the ones who are going to drive innovation. They're the ones who are going to create things that we're all using, like our tech, our phones. But at the same time, we do want everybody else to be able to have these skills. Because you see, when you're a scientist, there's a way you think. There's a way you look at things around you. And we need more people to have that kind of mindset. When you have that mindset, remember I was just talking about that 10, 15 year span? That's the kind of span you have. You have a big picture mentality. We need everybody to have that big picture mentality. We don't have it right now. So we need to imbibe that. We need to create that. If you go to China, if you're working on a project with them, they're not telling you two years. They're not telling you five years. They are telling you actually 20 years because they have that big picture mentality. Same thing with the Japanese. When I was in graduate school, even in my undergrad, my best friends were Koreans, Chinese, and Japanese. And they taught me that, the beauty of that. Thinking big picture, thinking long term. Two years, four years is not enough time for you to really study and understand something. And that's why you see our children get frustrated. We started with 6334 system, all of a sudden, we now went to nine, what did they call it? Nine, three. I mean, they keep changing it. Why? You're working with something, give it 20 years. Let's see, come back, okay, let's revisit, let's do this, let's do that. Give it time. So, so take us through any of your item that would actually be fun for a kid to learn. Of course, I actually have something here with me, and this is a model microscope. We use it to teach biology, called STEM education science. We teach them how to collect samples. You see, a lot of our children, like us, were weaned on CSI, you know, taking samples, checking DNA, finding out who the criminal is. So this is, we teach them that this is fun, just like what they've seen on TV. And that's the model microscope. Use that to view the slides and these are the slides and we have some prepared slides here already and I also teach and demonstrate to them how to collect the samples just like they see on the shows the spatula the scraper sample kit the pipettes all these different things and believe me they love it they soak it up all up yes they are playing but at the same time they are learning so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and this has a way of helping the child to oh lose them. Oh my God, they love it. You see, a lot of our children, unfortunately, do not have hands-on practical experience with this. So when they go and take WAEC, they are giving them answers already, and they're telling them to go back and reverse engineer that and manufacture things for the practical exam. Whereas when they're able to understand how to use this and actually undertake the experiments themselves, it makes sense. OK, this is what we were learning. Ah, they told us about cells. Wow, this is what they really look like. It comes to life for them. They, they get it. They grasp it. And then they're able to build upon that to have a firmer conceptual understanding. OK, so from, from your understanding with schools, working with schools in Lagos State, for example, um, are there laboratories well stocked? Do they have enough equipment? A lot of our schools don't have labs. That's why I was talking about WIAC and the exams. And those of them who do, a lot of them, they're locked up. Both the labs. private and public? Or? Both private and public. A lot of them, the labs are locked up. And then those of them who, who are really good private schools, I mean, some of them, they do try. Some do try. But I still think it's not enough. There still needs to be more. Finally, Tola, um, you are a startup. What would you like government to do for you? I would like government to support us <laughs> and bring us in to have more discussions with them and have more discussions with, um, how would I she say outreaches. There you go, more outreaches with the teachers, more outreaches with the uh, students. I know everybody's always talking about funding. Not that we don't like money, we like money too, but it's beyond money. We need them to create a favorable environment for us to be able to have schools adopt this. Thank you for being on Tech Trends today. Thank you. Thank you. China and India are some of the world's leading countries when it comes to STEM. Any surprise why their citizens are amongst the leading inventors today? I believe Tola should be encouraged as she continues on her quest to make more kids interested in STEM.
Thank you for watching the show today. Do follow us on social media. And don't forget, you can watch this and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukomeka Agbata. Oh, 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 oh,